Hi guys, Jimmy McIntyre here and welcome to another episode of Photoshop Secrets. Today we're going to look at a tool that's incredibly powerful but rarely talked about by landscape and cityscape photographers. The tool I'm talking about is frequency separation which has become an invaluable tool for portrait photographers. But I'm going to show you how you can use it to really clean up and sharpen your images beautifully. Essentially for this tutorial we're going to create two layers based on this image. One layer is going to contain all of our global information, like lighting and colour. The next layer is going to contain smaller information like details and textures. With these two layers we can make very specific changes without affecting other parts of our image. So let me show you how we do it and you can see it in action as well. Firstly, if you want, you can download my frequency separation action straight from shutterevolve.com. You'll see the link for it in the description of this video and it should be popping up on the video right now but I'm going to show you how you can create your own frequency separation layers. The first thing we need to do is hold down Ctrl and J or Command and J on a Mac and duplicate your background layer. And we'll do that again. Now we make the top layer invisible and I'm going to call this layer Global. With this layer we're going to go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur and we're going to blur the layer. Now the radius will depend on the scene and what you want to achieve with this layer. So right now I'm just going to make it a little bit blurry and just press OK. It's not important right now. Next, I'm going to make this layer visible at the top and call it Local. We're going to go to Image, Apply Image and make sure your settings are the same as mine. So we choose Layer and Global, Subtract and make sure Scale is a 2 and Offset is 1, 2, 8 and just press OK. Now we change the top layer to Linear Light and we'll select these two layers and press Ctrl and G to group them and you can see the image is exactly the same with these two layers on top. Now we've just created a global layer which will affect the colours and brightness in our image and a local layer which will affect our details and textures. Now I'm just going to delete these and we're going to talk specifically about this picture. If we zoom into the top right hand corner here you'll see it has some terrible sensor dust or lens dust in the sky and we also have some flare from the lights here. It's in general a poorly shot image by me and, and I did actually get my sensor and lenses clean before I went to Dubai so I'm not quite sure why there was so much dirt there. But anyway it makes for a great demonstration video. My goal here is to create a much cleaner sky. We want to get rid of all of this sensor dust and we want to try and smoothen out this area. Now when removing sensor dust we can often use the spot healing tool or the clone stamp but often when we're working with a sky like this sometimes there's just a spot and no matter where we clone in the sky it just doesn't do a good job. It either leaves the sky in that area a little bit too dark or a little bit too bright. With frequency separation that just isn't an issue anymore. You can remove any unwanted sensor dust very naturally and quickly. We also want to nullify the flare here and try and create a nicer, smoother area all around here. So I'm just going to go to my action and just press play. Now here I choose the radius of the blur of my global layer. And what this means is as I move the radius along and things get blurrier, like for example the sensor dust now is disappearing, and when these areas disappear from this layer, they will be put into the local layer above. And everything else that remains, so we can still see the flare here and the flare there, all of that is going to be put into the global layer. So we can't see our sensor dust anymore, so that's going to be in our local layer. But we can see the lens flare, so that's going to be in the global layer. If that doesn't make sense, you'll understand soon what I mean. So I'm going to press OK. Now the action's finished. I'm going to go down to the local layer. This is where my sensor dust is going to be. I'm going to choose the clone brush and I can make actually quite a big brush here and I can just select an area, let's say here, and make sure current layer is selected and watch. I can just blend out the sensor dust and we don't have to worry about the brightness of those areas. It just removes them very smoothly and very naturally. And I can do the same here. I'll just select this area, just move up and get rid of the sensor dust there. That's the before and after. Looks incredibly smooth and natural. Now how do we get rid of this particular area here with the lens flare? Well there are different ways to do it and it really depends on the scene. Firstly we have to make sure that we have global selected and we have a decent feather. So let's say we're going to go for around 
100 feather. We need a nice smooth radius. So I'm just going to select around the flare like this. I press Command and H to hide the marching ants. Then I go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. And now I just move the radius up until the flare dissolves or disappears a little bit. Now I don't expect it to completely disappear, but that's done a pretty decent job. So that's the before and after. And we can see actually that there's still a little bit of lens dirt or sensor dirt there. So I'm going to choose the local layer, choose my clone stamp, and just very quickly clone that out. There we go. So now if we want to make this entire area much smoother and cleaner, we can actually change the feather to around 180. Make sure global selected and drag all the way down here and along. And it shouldn't affect the lights here because they were also included in this global layer when we chose the radius. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to press Command and H to hide the marching ants. Go to Filter, Blur, and Gaussian Blur. Now I'm just going to reduce the radius a little bit and press OK. So now, if we make this invisible, we can see that we've smoothed out the sky beautifully. There's still a little bit there, so we'd still have to work on it a bit, but you get the idea. But in general, it's a huge improvement, and if we didn't use frequency separation, it may have taken a long time to try and clean everything up like this. Now I'm going to show you two other very cool uses for frequency separation. Firstly, we've got two areas down here, which for me are a little bit distracting. They're a little bit too bright. So all I need to do is choose my lasso tool again, change the feather to, let's say, around 30 because it's a smaller area. And I'm just going to select around this area. Then I can go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and just play with the radius. And as you can see, the highlights have been dampened massively. So if we press OK and press Control and H or Command and H, we can see that this change hasn't affected the details at all in our image. It's just brought down the brightness. So we still have all the texture that we had before. It's just dampened the brightness a little bit. And we can do exactly the same over here. We just select around this area and go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and we can just press OK. And as you can see, just as before, we've brought down the highlights and it's just a little bit less distracting now. So there's the before and after. Now one final thing I'm going to show you is sharpening with frequency separation. Because we have the colors and highlights on this global layer, it means that we can sharpen just the details on the local layer. So if we just did a standard unsharp mask, it would sharpen the clouds up here and everything else that we didn't want to be affected. But by choosing just local, making sure we have no active selections, and going to filter, sharpen, unsharp mask, and let's say we have a threshold of about five, and we can bring up the radius or, or the amount, we can alter that, whatever suits our needs. And I'm going to make it nice and strong just for you so you can see it on the video. And I'm going to press OK. Now, if we zoom right in, we can see how much sharper the image is. And that's a little bit too sharp. I wouldn't do it that sharp normally. But the huge benefit of this, as I mentioned before, is that with things like the cloud here, we're not affecting it in any way. We're just affecting the textures and details in the buildings. And that's it. For Raya Pro users, frequency separation is going to be added into the panel in the next update. So you can have a lot more flexibility in your workflow. For now, feel free to download my action from Shutter Evolve. I hope you found this tutorial useful and I look forward to sharing more with you next time.